no, no, say no, 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 My name is Barbara Lenz. I'm a little bit years old and I've been an artist <laughs> loosely described for a long time. Um, when I was um, preteen, I think I wanted to I wanted to be an artist because to me artists being an artist and doing artistic things was a, a kind of perfection. And um, in my family, you didn't get get anything on you know any rewards or any kudos for who you were. Um, it was on what you did, and you know there was not really the push to be perfect, but it just seemed like well, people would really like me if I were perfect. If I'm just a regular person from Long Island and you know, nothing special, then you know wouldn't wouldn't really be anything to strive for or look forward to. Um, and I started out drawing with grade school stuff, you know, posters. Um, almost won an award for a safety poster, except I spelled safety wrong. So I was like, oh, no. <laughs> was like I can't think this is how my art career is going to go, but I didn't think about it that hard at the time. Um, I did a lot of uh, drawing horses, cut out every picture in every magazine I could find of horses. and. To this day, I have a lot of pictures of horses, but no drawings of my my work of horses because I just kept cutting out the pictures and admiring them, putting them in a scrapbook, and never got to the point of actually drawing them, just collecting them. So, and it was that phase I think all teenage, early teenage girls go through that you have to have a horse in your backyard, and. Uh, but I, I still always gravitated to doing creative things. I liked working with my hands and learned crochet, I learned sewing. Um, and I was always ahead. Like, we took sewing in school, I already knew how to make a dress. So, you know, doing the little kitchen apron was kind of like, huh, okay, this is boring. Um, yeah, so it's just um, trying, to, uh, trying to do everything I could creatively. Um, Jumping ahead through school, I was um, an 80 to 90, maybe a little more average student. Um, I ended up from fourth grade being in an experimental group that was, they pushed um, accelerated programs. So, you know, I didn't know, I didn't have a choice. It just seemed normal to me. So we were doing uh, fusion math in eighth grade, which I don't even know what fusion math is anymore. It's like, but um, stuff like that. and. I never could quite get back to all the creative stuff. And um, when I mentioned being an artist or doing something in the art field, my parents' mantra was, you know, that's nice, <coughs> but you really need to do something you can fall back on. You know, how about banking or, you know, how about, you know, so be secretary or, you know. That was their mindset at the time, you know, from, I was born in 1948, so they're coming from, you know, World War II and, the economy and you know depression in their young lives and so it's you know their thing was you you need to earn a living and support yourself you know so art was not one of the things that was in their realm of idea that you could support yourself with it um, so it was always kind of like you know that's a nice hobby that's a nice hobby so it was always stayed a kind of a hobby um, Moving Fed got married, got graduated in 66, married in 67, living in Alaska for two years, came back home in 1969. I said, yeah, I want to do something artsy. So I went to an adult education uh, program, you know, for like 10 weeks or whatever it is, for photography and uh, drawing and painting. And um, my husband at the time laughed at the work, oh, what is that, you know, kind of thing. So. That was before drugs were really popular. <laughs> but, uh, um, anyway, I was like, oh, I guess my career is not going anywhere in art either. So um, basically did the housewifey thing. Um, ended up with two kids, 33-year uh, mortgage, two dogs and a cat. And my husband decided that family life wasn't for him, and he left. So I was out in Mastic with, like I said, 33-year mortgage, blah, blah, blah. So now it's like, okay, now what? You know, I hadn't been working because I had two babies. One was three and one was one and a half. And it's like, shit, I have no skills. I don't have anything. And, you know, of course, I can't pursue art now. So I ended up working for a few years 
doing every job. If you mention it, I probably did it at some point in my life because um, I delivered newspapers. Um, I slept my butt out to Amagansett uh, five days a week to work uh, for an entrepreneur out there. I did sewing. I did decorating. I did antique refurbishing. I did whatever she needed me to do. We dug flowers. We went antique hunting. We went garbage dumping, you know, because going in the garbage in Southampton, the dumps is a lot nicer than going to Brookhaven's dump, but, uh, we, you know, I refurbished, you know, furniture for her, and, um, and I just did what, like, a second-hand person for her. I did that, and then I worked at Watermill Museum on the weekend, so every day, I was getting in my car and going somewhere to the East End, and it's like an hour drive, and on the weekends especially, the hours that I was going was when everybody else was going too, so I spent a lot of time on the road, coming and going. I had to neighbor watching my kids when they weren't in school. Um, I did drive a bus for a long time, a nursery school bus, for um, eight or nine years, while my kids were very little in nursery school and then in early grades. Um, but it came to the point where it was like, I got my car one day and I was like, what day is today? Wait a minute, where am I going? I forgot now. Am I supposed to go here? Am I really, you know, I could not pin down what day it was, or what job I was going to, what, I said, this is, <laughs> I have to stop. It's too, too much. I did it for a couple of years. It was very hard. But all the while, working at nursery school and you know, other little odd jobs. I tried to do it creatively, working with my hands. So I worked with um, the kindergarten group and doing storybooks, we do storyboards and storybooks, and I, we took them on nature walks, so I was sort of the science art teacher, <laughs> odd combination. Um, but I kept wanting to get back to art because it was just in me that I needed to try it to see if I had anything worth pursuing because Academics was, was fairly easy for me in school. Um, I liked writing, but it you know, wasn't really uh, something I pursued every day. So um, after my ninth year or so at nursery school, I said, I think, oh, I went to, went to Suffolk Community College right before I left nursery school. I went five days a week. I drove the bus at 8 o'clock. Watched, it took care of the kids in, you know, in the morning. 12 o'clock, did my second bus run. Jumped out of the bus, jumped in my car, drove up to Selden campus, had a class for two hours, jumped back in my car, drove back to Mastic, and then did the afternoon bus run, and then finished off at the nursing oh school. God. So even though I didn't have five jobs, I still felt like I was, like, constantly going. It took me five years to get my associate's degree. And... I have to say, I love having the associate's degree, but it wasn't in the art field that I wanted. I got an associate's in the humanity, arts and humanities. Because they put me in an accelerated program. And I didn't want to be in it. I said, I just want to do art. I just want art classes. And they were like, oh, no, 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 no. You, you, know, you, you really did so good on this writing sample. You know, we really would like to have you in this program because it's a new program, blah, blah, blah. So I said, fine. So every time I had a chance to get a humanities credit, I tried to make it an art class. And I said, could you exchange this? You know. So I was getting a little bit. It took me five years. I said, I can't do this anymore. You know, I just like, I have to either go for it or forget it. And I was excited about it. I love college. I love learning. I love being in that atmosphere. So they had told me uh, in Suffolk that being in this program was going to add to my um, admission uh, viability at Southampton. So I said, oh, well that's still doable. So I really wasn't planning on going right away, but I went down there, it was like August, and I went to Southampton and I said, oh, you know, I heard that there was like a reciprocal, you know, I said I have this honor certificate and this other certificate and this certificate, I said, and they said it was worth something to get into Southampton, but I just want to know what kind of programs you have to offer, because I just want to do art. I said, I've done all the other stuff, just want to do art. So they're like, okay, this girl, you know, I guess like a summer replacement of all the clerical. She goes, she's looking at this stuff, she goes, well, you know, 
the dean has to approve this, and you have to go through all this, and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. I said, just tell me what you have to offer, and I'll, I'll have to think about it. You know, this is like August 20th, and school was starting August 31st or something like that. So anyway, she said, well, do you have your transcript? And I said, oh, yeah. Uh, so I gave it to her. So she said, I'll be right back. And she goes. And she's gone for about 20 minutes. She, she comes back. I think, oh, she left, you know, I went to lunch, whatever. <laughs> she comes back and she goes, okay, school starts September 1st. And the dean said, this is fine. And you can have this program and this program and this program. And I was like, oh, you mean I'm registered? She goes, oh, no problem. You're in. You know, she said, you start. So I was like, uh-oh. Because <laughs> now it's got to be full time during the day. I only had basically a part-time job. Luckily, my husband has a lot of guilt, ex-husband, um, being uh, Irish and not wanting anyone to make waves. I still get alimony, so there was a little bit of money coming in, not enough to cover anything, but enough to just not feel like I had to panic at the moment. So kind of ignorantly, um, I ended up being in school full time, three, four days a week. It was like, I still need money because I still have to pay for some of this. And I had bills because I still had the house with, you know, 28 year mortgage still left on it. And, you know, so um, this girl I met the first, the first week of school, she was doing house cleaning jobs. And she was going that semester to Italy to do um, learn frescoes. And she said, You want my jobs? I have five jobs. And you can have them. And it's like, Ooh, yeah, okay. I mean, hey, you know, again, I was schlepping out to Watermill, schlepping out to, you know, to do these jobs in between my classes, but um, I did it. I got my bills paid. I wasn't behind in anything. Um, and I got my bachelor's degree. Long story okay. short, that was a long story. Um, I did get my bachelor's degree in fine arts, thank you very much, and uh, was very proud of myself. And my mentor, my teacher mentor, said, okay, so now you got your paper. So, pay for 10 years, maybe you'll be where you want to be. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you couldn't tell me this before I went and did all this. And, you know, I did get a scholarship and an art award, but I still had to pay a substantial amount of money, you know, to that college. It's not cheap. So I was like, oh, you know, like somehow I couldn't have known this before, you know, but... It's like that baptism under fire, you have to do that. But I felt that I could say to somebody, well, I have a bachelor's degree, and maybe I'm an artist. You know, so still I'm not sure about saying I'm an artist. But um, So then I stopped painting for a while because I was trying to catch up with other things that went by the wayside. Uh, so I, again, was going back to the routine of many, many jobs in many places. But... I got a job in a women's coalition, and Mario Politi's wife was the secretary there. And she said, oh, my husband, he's in this art club. She goes, well, he thinks he's an artist, but the, the club is great. She goes, you'll like the club. They're wonderful. So I said, oh, you know, give me some information. So, um, so she gave me the newsletter, and I came one night, and I was hiding in the back as my normal. And... Um, I don't know if Mario was the president then or the vice president, but he goes, oh, and we have a new member, you know, and, I, and I'm like looking around and it's just the wall behind me and he goes, come on up, and like, you know, we'll get you a new member. And I'm like, oh, I haven't joined yet. And he gets me in the corner, he says, oh, you know, you get all kinds of benefits and, you know, it's only $25. And I said, well, what is, because I had no idea how the club worked. And I said, well, what does it actually do for me? He goes, for $25? <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, you know, what do you actually do? And he, then he started to tell me, you know, you have these shows and blah, blah, blah. And so basically, I ended up signed up that night. So um, it was the best sign up I ever did in my life, I have to tell you people. It's, uh, what was the name of the club? Wet paints. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's wet paints. It's under, no, uh, I'm it's sorry. Yes, I'm not. Yes, thank you. What year was that? Uh, ninety-five, I think. Wow. Ninety-five or ninety-six. Um, and then Jackie Gannon was president. And she, oh no, I forget. No, Dan was president. I think, and he found out I knew how to use a computer, and I ended up with the newsletter. 
Then I ended up as vice president. Then I ended up as a treasurer. And then I think I went back to one of those jobs. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, you want to be president? And I'm like, no, not really. And it's like, sure, you'd be good at it. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. Two I'm years, excited. that's all. Just two years. And I'm like, oh, okay. So two years came and went. went. And then it was like, I can't, I, you know, I want, somebody else needs to do this. So I talked poor Chris Gordon into doing it for two years. And then <laughs> so we just flip flopped. So it was the same two, we were like a dual president. It was the both two of us. Anyway, um, this is where I got to at this point. So only when I joined the club, Wet Paints Studio Group in Sable, did I actually start painting for myself more routinely and more regularly. I'm still very bad at it. I, I don't do it when I really should do it every day, and I don't. But every show that we have, I try and have at least two paintings. So there's that time frame incentive, like being in school. You have to have it by this date, you know, the report. Kind of motivates me to stop and do just artwork, you know, so I try and play. But I started out in Southampton basically painting realistically. Not that you can really tell, but this is like a vestige of some realistic painting I did. This is a Kanequa River. I had done, um, done a small painting of this and some photographs of this tree uh, on Montauk Highway in, um, in Shirley. And I passed it every day, every day, every day. And I loved the tree. It was a gnarly old tree. So I painted this, um, and somebody... Uh, I don't know if it was Stella or Dan Cook said, that is so abstract. And I'm like, what, are you kidding? It's not abstract at all. You know, like, oh, no, it has the potential, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't get it at all. I didn't think it was abstract at all. Um, I just like the dynamics of the, you know, the intense colors. And uh, off and on, I try to paint in different workshops, and but I still can't get away from this kind of, Two color dynamism, you know, like we, to you know feed against each other and be more, be very dramatic. Because I'm not melodramatic. <laughs> you might have a different opinion, but I'm really not melodramatic. And my mother always tried to dress me in red, red clothes. I hated red clothes. Red was her color. She, if she went out and she was feeling good. She put on a red jacket, and she'd have red shoes and a red pocketbook, and you know she would be dressed to the nines in red. She loved red, and that was, and she was not a boisterous woman either. She, you know, she was kind of shy and conservative, but red was just something that was, you know, very. It was happening in her soul. Right. And she loved that color. And she always tried to dress me in red. And I was like, don't, don't get me red. <laughs> you know, I was, you know, chubby, not pretty, and red was like, here I am. You know, kind of thing, and I just, I just was like, you know, I'm here, it's okay, you know, in case they low key. And red was absolutely not the low key color for me. So I always resisted that red and that kind of drama, you know, of black, white, you know, red, red and green or whatever. Um, but in my painting, when I started really working, I found that I, I ended up even. This is a plein air painting that Chris Gordon and I, and um, it was just you and I, was it? I don't know if it was us. We went to Conic Herb Farm, and the day did not look anything like this. It was a bright, sunny day, all day. The place was, there was a big field, it was all the yellow green all over the place. I started painting the one, and it did not come out. And I just kept gravitating to this dark, spooky hole in the in the trees, and I couldn't even tell you where this was now because it doesn't really look like that. It really had a lot more space, but I sort of shrunk it down. And then when I enlarged it to do another one, thinking, "Oh, I'll make it the way it really looked," this is what I ended up with. So it's like you you expect something to come out from behind the bush here because it's like just kind of creepy, spooky. Mysterious. Yeah, and, and I, I like that. That appeals to me on one level. Um, but this is a, a really normal, so to speak, a normal plain air. We did this is Lachlan Vineyard in Sayville. You know, so every once in a while, you know, I, I go back to trying to paint um, 
realistic or, you know, natural. And uh, the reason I stopped after college was because it, it didn't have that, that um, attraction for me for some reason. It was like, okay, I painted the tree and board. You know, it was like, okay, I don't really want to do a flower. It's, you know, it, it wasn't saying it, you know, there was not a personal connection. I love flowers. I love trees. I, you know, I'm very into the spirit connection of being part of the earth. But to paint it, I just felt like I can't compete with Mother Nature, number one. And it wasn't, at the moment, I wasn't tuned into like being impressed. Uh, I, it's hard to explain, but I was bored with still life and landscape. So when I joined the club, I started out, I'm trying to think of one that I did when I first started. I don't think I brought in I started out trying to do a couple of realistic. Um, and I was kind of like getting bored. Then uh, Vito Pinto joined the club and he did very surreal figures and story. And he had big stories behind his work and um, it got kind of, you know, like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I think I might like doing something like that. But I didn't really force myself. So we were talking one night and he said, uh, hey, just do it. Who the hell cares? You know, who's going to see it? You don't have to show it to anyone. And he challenged me to just put something on canvas, anything, don't care what it was, who cares, right? And it was very hard for me to do that because I was like, you know, the, the English, uh, you know, we have a beginning, middle, and end, and it has a point, a story, yeah. and you, did, you know, the discipline of that. To just throw the paint on the canvas was like, oh my God. But... This was the one that I did on that challenge. I did a small one, a smaller one on canvas board. <coughs> and he analyzed, we actually, I don't know how many people were here, we used to go to the diner after a meeting, yeah. and a bunch of us were at the diner, and I pulled this out and I put it on a chair, and yeah. when people walked in, they were like, Vito, did you do that? That's a new one, that's great. Wow. You know, and he goes, I didn't do that. And they're like, well, who? And I was the only other person sitting there. So it was like, you did that? You know, kind of, and it was kind of like amazed, frightening, scary, fun, you know, feeling good. Um, I thought it was very successful for just not trying to be anything. Um, but uh, the more we analyzed it, the more it was, there's a bird in here, this is a figure, of course, in the moon. I was trying to go for kind of the feminine mystique of the moon and a figure, a spiritual figure. I don't know what the other stuff is, uh, you know. You're allowed of your to have right. So this is what I started with. I didn't even see the bird, and I didn't see a lot of stuff in here that he had seen. So that was kind of encouraging that, oh, you know, maybe there is a spot for me with this kind of work. Um, I did three of them. The other one I didn't really like, but this was the other one of that. <clears throat> trio, um, and this one was called um, Forest of Imagination. So I, I liked doing the drapery. I liked, again, that mysterious dark back there. What's back there? And, you know, and the little, the little egg, which I didn't realize at the time was sort of becoming a, a, a thematic thing. Um, I know I started this whole meet the artist to get, you know, see what inspires people and what, um, what they like to, what they like to do. Um, just this one, I wanted to just do someplace, I wanted someplace peaceful that I, in my mind I could go to get away from it all. And I did this. It's just simple, you know, couple of colors and just someplace that's, Almost recognizable, but not quite, you know, so that, and uh, again, that mystery, mysterious yeah, kind of place. Right, yeah. some place you can hide. Um, and then, I, I, going back and forth, now a lot of things, a lot of things inspire me or motivate me. And my work seems to be running in three or four categories. And, uh, let me take this. Um, lately, or I should say in the last couple of years since, um, since I finally reconciled with my mother's death on a certain level, um, a lot of my work has become uh, 
not quite story, but uh, can you guys, you, I know you're all way in the corner there, can you see? Um, they have, um, they have this connection to, uh, to the earth and the spirit, and I'm starting to now put uh, faces at this point, and little faces or just eyes and nose or eyes and a mouth, kind of uh, just, and don't frame your thing like this because it's falling and out. And the red is your mother's touch. Well, that's what, this is what has evolved out of this is the red drapery is my mother. That symbolizes my mother. Uh, the blues of water, the purples of the earth, the sky, or you know, space, or the other ether. Um, the greens and browns are are the earth itself, and there's a face to characterize the spirit. Um, and then the figure is, you know, the best part of every one of us, you know, and our connection. Yeah. And I like the idea of following the connection of being one with the earth or being a part of it that you know if you hurt the earth then you hurt yourself and and the connection with people who are gone from us you know and i always uh, feel like this one in this one it's t called time to fly is because i had done a few with this theme and i felt like maybe it was time to get on and get past the grieving and just try and be on my own i'm still looking for you know for that nurturing, but but I'm letting go of a big part of it. But she's still there watching and protecting, so it's kind of that. But when I look at that, I think of Claude <coughs> Munch, where he did a lot of uh, screen yeah. pitches with similar. This looks like the screen. No, no, the figure. No, but oh, oh. talking about like the the figure. <coughs> the figure uh huh. Just, <coughs> the, yeah, the, the, the I you mystery know, to it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's a transversity to overthink the, the Some of these are very pointedly my journey and my catharsis and my... But also I'm trying to e explore everyone else's journey, you know, and how are we connected or not connected. Um, this one says inside the dream. Now this <laughs> figure is just hanging on to the branch yeah. and it's like in the dream you always feel like you're not quite tethered you know it's, it's some part of your brain is always thinking you're not you're not really in the real world at some point but yet I'm still holding on with by a little bit of to the red red holding on and it's all around you know I like the idea that it's still all around me to nurture to be there to remind me to whatever so these are very personal um, in that respect. And that's just that exploration. But other things, uh, I don't remember which one started. But Oh, for a while I was doing, um, doing stuff that, uh, that I was just trying to not have any kind of purpose, <laughs> which is awesome. <clears throat> And I was trying to do things like just abstract concepts, like seasons. So this one is like winter, spring, summer, and fall, the colors, but how they're all interconnected and how they go around, you know. And I like circles and swirls and semicircles. I don't really like square things or, or boxy looking things. So even though I work on a square rectangle canvas, but um, you know, that was, I thought, I thought, a purely abstract concept of, you know, work. The seasons, yeah. The seasons, you know. It's, I mean, it's little flowers, it's leaves, you know, you can get that out of it. But, because um, I'm still new at exploring what abstract really is, and everyone you talk to has a different idea. So, um, my friend Pura was doing a show on Women's History Month um, at Stony Brook, and she asked me, a year before she set it up, to do a piece for her, to, for Cruz. the show. What? Cruz. What? Pura Cruz? Yeah. She asked me to do a piece. She wanted to have me in the show. I hadn't seen her in quite a long time. But anyway, um, I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And I uh, could not get anything going. I said, well, I have a year, but this is crazy, right? Time is like clicking. 
I was driving, I don't know where, one day, and this word went across my head and said, Feathered Moon. And I was like, oh, Feathered Moon. Well, that sounds cool. Then I was like, yeah, what do I do with that? So I was <laughs> trying to figure out why that came to me like that, a feathered moon, and what was it, what does it mean? You know, it, I don't know any Native American stories that has a feathered moon. They have all kinds of other moons, but not a feathered one. And it took me seven months of this brain worm in my head. I could not concentrate on anything else. I got nothing else done as far as creative. This was stuck in my head. And I was just to the point where I was like, and I don't know if this happens to other people. I mean, it doesn't happen to me all the time, but every once in a while you get something and it would not, I could not let it go. I could not get rid of it. I couldn't replace it with anything. I said, finally, I had no real concept of what it would look like. I said, well, I'm just going to start painting, putting paint on canvas. I'll start with a moon shape, start with feathers, you know, something just to get it out of my head so I could work on it. And that's what I ended up with. And um, it, she, yeah, it, a lot of people that look at it say, you know, they feel very spiritual about it. I'm not sure why. Um, I still don't know what it means. And that, for that reason, I tried to re-explore it and I made it, I thought maybe do like a dream catcher. Well, that might help me. So I had this stupid wire hoop that I saved. God knows why. but. It's coming. It's getting a little droopy now because it's just been stored very badly. But um, I tried to interpret that into a minorly dimensional piece with the string and the feather. Um, feathers are always thought of as being messengers or carry messages. Yeah. So on the on the um, on the feather, um, I had written, you know, Mom, I love you, and uh, that's the feather. You know, for that one. But again, I really have no explanation for this, and I'm going to keep trying to re explore it different ways and different, maybe different media to see if I have an answer <laughs> as to what it means to me, really, or why it came to me the way it did. So that's, that's part of the insanity of being an artist, too. Uh, <laughs> um, then I tried a couple of just pure, you know, palette knife, let's not think about it, and the part of, part of me uh, wouldn't let go, and there's a figure in here um, that you have to look at it for a minute and you can see him. So I, I'm still finding myself, even doing this, uh, kind of controlling. Gee, who would have thought? Um, <laughs> then I took a workshop with Lester in um, monoprint, and I enjoyed that a lot. That was a little different media. And we did stuff like this with putting, you know, shapes on the paper and then the ink and rolling it through and you kind of get this <clears throat> resist and double, double imagery. I thought, gee, this is pretty neat, you know, because I don't usually like geometrics, so I'm kind of, I like round, curvy things. But then I tried to, you know, work it into a painting, so I tried oh, this, um, you know, and again, it's still, it goes back to a little bit of, bringing out the Native American culture of weaving and ghosts and, uh, and their symbols and their, you know, their written, not really written language, but their pictograph language. So I tried to do that. Um, I don't know how successful, but it was interesting to try to go from one to the other and explore it. Um, then, let's see, it's, these are really not sequential, but... Um, another uh, abstract. There, it, it's energetic and the colors, I like the drama of the colors, but I don't know as a pure a abstract, you know, because uh, I really don't know what that means, if it's successful or not, so I just keep trying it. Uh, oh, then I was in the, um, in the, um, Arts Weave in Patchogue, when they first did that, that first year with the Joyce Corner Gallery, mm -hmm. um, they had a whole thing, they, uh, it was a whole uh, art event, and then they had the theater thing. And I did this one, because I thought I would try something different with the canvas, and it's, um, 
it's actual canvas soaked in gesso and then mold, you know, just squished onto the frame canvas. Um, the, thing, <laughs> the thing is when I start, and there's about 25 faces in this painting, so you have to really look at it. But when I started, the faces were much more dimensional, like almost like a mask. And I didn't use a hard mask underneath, I just wanted the canvas. And the, the gesso and the white glue that I used, I guess, absorbs moisture over time, so they started to kind of like shrink and get shrivelly. And so it's actually a work in changing progress, I guess you could call it. You know? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, some days the faces look a little less uh, intense than others, but um, that was something different to try too. And, uh, you know, I would, and that was inspired by, because we're talking about inspiration, having a really bad day at work. <laughs> I, I, I have, um, it's just that I have, uh, you know, I'm a secretary to an assistant principal, so we have kids in the office in and out all day in trouble. I have three discipline assistants who are sometimes all there at the same time investigating different things. I have a girl that works with me, Clark. Um, the phone rings on the ring, it rings on our line, it rings on intercom. And then I have the radio with 41 staff assistants. Some of them usually all wanting attention at the same time. So I have the radio, the phone, the intercom, my boss yelling for me, my girlfriend talking to me, and the discipline assistants needing something yesterday, and it's like, ah! So I said, okay, everyone has to shut up, because you're competing with all these other voices in my head, and someone's got to get here. So it was like just that. Then after I calmed down, I said, ooh, that might be an interesting painting with all the voices in my head. So that's what this is, all the voices. So. But you can get, yeah, I mean, if you're nutty enough, you can get inspiration from anywhere. And it suits me. So, um, okay, another, um, another theme, which some of these are, seem a little redundant, but uh, they, uh, is the uh, mother-child. Again, you know, from my mother and the nurturing and... I think I had a really great childhood. I have no complaints about my parents. I don't blame them for anything. I don't, you know, I mean, it's just, um, it was just a beige childhood. You know, Long Island, middle class. Went to school, went home. We were told, you know, to do something. We did it. We, you know, my brother, not well, my brother was a little bit of a rabble rouser, but then he went to the Navy and that cured him. So, um, <laughs> but, you know, it, it was not, um, Fantastic, traumatic. It wasn't anything, you know, that I could say. Oh, I have this angst. This an artist, you know, the abused or not abused or whatever. Neglect. None, none of that. I had a good childhood. You know, I would live that life over again because it was a very nice country kind of life and just simple and easy. And um, but we still, whether it's a good life or a bad life, we still like that. Want that nurturing when we like. We miss that when it's not here. So. I started doing kind of not, you know, I didn't want to make it a graphic mother-child image, but I do still want a part of the earth and part of my circular connecting. Um, I started coming up with images where it's the mother's head and face mm -hmm. and the child's and it's the light between the mother and child, you know, kind of thing, that connection. So a lot of my work is similar to this as far as that mother-child imagery. And some of it is intentional, because maybe that's just what I'm feeling at the moment. But some of it, um, this one ended up looking like one of those bug-eyed fish. <laughs> I don't know what I started out with. Um, again, here's the, you know, here's that person or that being, that spirit light, and the nurturing wrap of red, and the moon being the feminine. And just all the connection, but it did really end up looking like an undersea adventure for something because uh, this right here mm -hmm. made it look like a bug eyed fish. <laughs> so, I, uh, when you say mother and child, is it you and your child or your mother and you? Anybody, any, you know, a mother and child when connection. You're painting. When, you're painting. when I'm painting, most of the time it's because uh, I'm missing my mom, you know, so I, you know, that. 
especially towards the end. I, so you're the child. Yeah. I'm the child, right? And and I picked the the like the yellow spirit because um, I think we all have the potential to strive to being a better being, uh, you know, lighter in any way. Um, and uh, my mother was, you know, basically a simple person. She didn't really deal in a lot of esoteric kind of concepts or anything. Um, but also, when I see my kids being hurt by someone, sometimes especially by their dad, it gets my German up and I get really upset and then I, I want to get that connection back that, you know, if I could just image my love for them, it would protect them. So, it's this whole, uh, you know, I don't know if anyone connects to that, but it's like, the more I analyze it, the more I think I'm really in deep doo-doo, but... <laughs> With the mother and child image, though, um, I was trying to go very pastel-y and abstract. I thought, oh, let me give that a shot. Every time I've tried pastel or light colored painting, I would start out very watercolory and it would end up like this. Very intense again. It was like, why can't I just leave it at a pastel? And that's, you know. That just seems to be whatever's coming through me. It has to be these kind of colors and these kind of, you know, imagery. But I had this one at a show and I was painting it basically this way. Because I wanted the light right kind of around here and that interest. And I got finished and I left, got a couple of coffee, came back and went, oh my God, this was for Mother's Day show. It's like, I cannot put this in the Mother's Day show because there is a gargoyle face smack dab in the middle of this paint. It's got his horrible open mouth, his cauliflower ear, his cyclops eye. He's horrible. We can't put this in a Mother's Day show. So now I'm doing the art trick. Clip, 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 clip. Turned it around a hundred times. I could not, I, I was devastated because I was like, three days before the show, I don't have another idea in mind, you know. I could not, could not deal with this face. So finally, I, I left it for a day and I, I went back and I turned it around and I'm like, I looked at it this way, and I thought, okay, I could do this. This this will work, and they put little, yes. some little extra gold flecks, and I'm like, okay, so I moved the dynamism around a little bit, you know, but I still really was kind of, eh, it's kind of wimpy, washy colors, you know, but I said I'm leaving it because now we're down to one day before the show. So I'm sitting in the show, and I'm telling the story to Barbara Ruth. I don't know if all of you know her. We find out that she and my brother went to grade school together in my hometown. It's like unbelievable. And she goes, we were talking about the mother-child image, and she goes, what well, I see that in there, and I'm like, you do? I said, there's a gargoyle in there, but I didn't see any mother-child image. And she looked at it this way. Yeah, that was, yeah it was this way. With the, the, like the hood over the mother and her face is here and the baby is yeah. here. Oh, How she saw it, you know, and I mean, I had flipped this around a hundred times and never saw anything even close, but she saw it. She goes, yeah, just go this way. So we were looking at it like this, because it was hanging this way. So we're looking at it this way. So even when I'm not trying, uh, that seems to be in the back of my mind all the time. And I don't know if that would be called inspiration or just insanity or <laughs> <laughs> stuck on a bump. I don't know. But it shows up even when I'm trying to be totally non-representational or, or abstract. You know? And uh, I really am, for any purist, I'm using the term abstract very loosely as a generic, you know, non-representational term. Not um, so then... Oh, this is another one about dreams and dreamers and, you know, that, that other place that your brain goes when you think you're sleeping. Um, and a lot of you remember this one. Oh, yeah. Duck's Duck dreams. <laughs> that was the demo that was starting out abstract. And I had a crooked neck. So I was, and I was trying to stay out of the camera, so I was painting like this. And my strokes kept going like this and like this and like this. 
And I'm like, oh, God, i got to fix that. So I was turning around. Somebody said, I see a duck in there. And I'm like, again, you know, we did one of these, everybody. But then everybody finally focused in and we found him. So <clears throat> I figured, what the hell? I took it home. I, you know, made, made it a little, enhanced, a little more enhanced so it does look like a duck. And I named it Duck Streams. And he's just sort of this way, Lord. Yeah. I mean, it bends this way. But if a duck were dreaming, wouldn't he feel like he was floating in all kinds of good yeah, like things to eat and on a nice little pond and, you know. This painting is like a rusher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of mine must be because people always ask me, what drugs were you on when you painted that? <laughs> but, um, then, uh, then, are they acrylics? Yes, all of these are acrylics. Um, oh, that's my bug-eyed monster. Um, this one, I, I did this as an abstract, it's called um, Wounded Earth, uh -huh. and something happened, I think, um, in Alaska that upset me, so I was just like, you know, people are not getting it, and we're just putting holes in the earth and ruining it, and this is, um, it's basically, out of the whole planet, this is all the green that's left, all the forest, and all the water which is poisoned. That's what the red yeah. blood things are. And it was very plain. And I was painting it this way for a while because I was trying to do sort of a sedimentary kind of looking landscape thing. And then I thought, nah, you know what? I put a blob of blood, like a blood stain kind of thing, you know, blood drip. And that made it much more successful, I think. Because you can kind of see you know, the desert and, you know, that stuff, but then the, this little patch of color is all that's left of it, what the earth is all about, so. And this one, a, a ribbon, which I don't remember which. Get one second place, mm -hmm. but no, that one not here like, uh, Excuse me, brother. that one looks like corn stalks, and I got a dry feeling uh, behind that. It's kind of like, uh, you know, Dead uh, planet, uh, yes, uh, 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 global warming. Yeah. Well, that was, and I, I, you know, I mean, I'm not like a card-carrying rabble rouser, and you know, no, it's your feeling. but that's, you know, that's my personal. No, you know, people don't have to like it or not like it, but I'm finding, unfortunately, I'm becoming very political, this, uh, with my, with some of my work. Um, <clears throat> this one. This one is my interpretation of uh, after the destruction. This is a city in ruins, basically. Um, and this person wearing feathers, going back to the native culture about being connected, um, has the, the baby child of the earth, a new earth, possibly. Um, again, the nurturing cloak, you know, yeah. we, we'll need that to grow and re renew. But basically, from the destruction is coming, you know, some kind of re rebirth kind of waters. And we're protecting the new earth or the, you know, the prospect. And everything else is going into that vortex and space where things should go. Do you think about this while you're doing it? Yes. yes. You have this all in your head? Yeah. Oh, okay. She, she paints like a beetle. <laughs> anyway, um... I have to tell you, I had this at a, a, a poetry thing, um, literacy thing at school, and a lot of the kids that are under 12 actually got that it was somebody with the baby, you know, protecting the baby. So I thought, well, I guess if they get it, thank you. So, it, you know, that's, uh, so my, my work is, you know, it's got a couple of different themes, and, uh, oh, this one is, uh, time consuming and again it's like the the moon's phasing and passing and the figure here i couldn't decide if i wanted it crying or praying or just yeah. almost fetal i could you know and i so i left it um but again the nurturing drape is there you know it's just to reach for it or whatever but how time passes and we miss so much you know so that was just that you know, a little snippet of, a lot of times I hear a word in the middle of a song. It's like, oh, that might be a good painting. 
and then it stuck. And it, it you know, and that's how this uh, this one came about. <coughs> the phrase is praying for a healing rain. I cannot remember what song it's from. It was popular maybe two years ago. It's been stuck in my head. I've written, you know, little doodles about it, written it down so I wouldn't forget it, but there's no chance of that because it's like stuck in there. And um, I said, you know, eventually I'm going to have to just sit down and try and paint it. So this, again, is just a snippet that, you know, I don't know the inspiration, what the song was about or anything, but praying for healing rain is what, again, you know, on the surface, it's very ecological, political kind of thing, which is not necessarily my intention, it's just my feeling. You know, I don't want to like, yeah. force it on anybody, but um, that somebody, some figure, some spirit, some group of souls has to take ownership and, you know, heal things and fix things. So, so that's kind of how that, how am I doing on top? Am I like overboard? No. Huh? No. Am I good? <laughs> yeah. You're done. Oh, okay. You, um, so anyway, so I have like several running themes or visuals, um, which I gravitate back and forth. Um, this I tried new with a palette knife, and I put the paint on, kind of like a paintbrushy thing, but a little bit thicker. Trying to make it a, and then I took the knife and I just graffito um, texture in it, right, you know, the sun rays and with, with other lines. So it's not quite dimensional, but it has a more, little more texture than just blobbing on the paint. So it, a little different look. And I like the mix of colors, you know, like, see, see sometimes really nice. those sunsets that are yeah. pink and purple and peach and orange and gold and every, you know, and you just can't get it. You just, you know. That's great. Uh, so I tried my best at doing something like that. <clears throat> and this is called PowerPoint. So anybody who's looking for a computer chip thing is not PowerPoint like that. It's a PowerPoint because there's a figure sitting on the cliff point here watching the sun. So, so that's, um, I, I don't know, I think that covered everything just about. Just, um, have you taken photographs of all your paintings? Yes. Good. I'm not able to do anything with them in the computer, but I have them. <laughs> I'm working on that. Yes, 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 that's my next class yeah. at college, is figuring out how to actually do things with it. I, I, you know, I managed to get some things done in the computer, but the program I have is limited. And the other day I was working, I was a couple of hours look, looking at the photos, make sure I didn't have duplicates and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden the whole thing went, Psst. so I was like, oh, where are my pictures? And I couldn't retrieve them out of the folder. They just got transferred somewhere. Well, yes. Well, that's a big place. I haven't found them yet. So, you know, I don't know where they are. I mean, I still, I still have duplicates. In the main frame, I guess main. Sorry, I apologize. I don't know the terminology, but it's lost in the computer, and I can get some of the pictures. But I thought I had more, so I don't know if I actually deleted some or not. But anyway, I'm still. Television is probably for lost in space. Yeah, that is me. I am the poster child. And so, uh, you know, I don't know. Does anyone have any questions, or I, you know, just. Yeah, I'm, amazing. Please don't call any doctors with you know, <laughs> psychiatrists. How do you use a lot of yellow, uh, Barbara? Because, well, yellow, this symbolic, the ones that are, you know, the stories behind it are symbolic. The yellow is the spirit, like yeah. all of our spirits, or that better one. selves. That one. That one. Yeah, she has yeah. a spirit. The figure, yeah. the, the figural ones have, except for the moon, that moon, had, you know, that had. That's the feather moon. Yes, the feather moon. Feather moon, yes. That's uh, wonderful. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. So, that, yes. Oh, yeah. Your mother loved red. Did I? Your mother loved the color red. Yes. You got a lot of red in your work. Yes, when well, my mother died in 96. When I started, so right after I first joined the club, my mother had passed away. <coughs> very badly from diabetes complications. And for almost a year, there was no way to get to 
hug her and tell her it was okay, yes, yes, or yes. Yeah. you couldn't touch her really, basically, because she was so bad. Um, so that that whole year, really, I lost her before she died. So this is really trying to capture that, you know, that I know she's there, feel her sometimes there, but most of the time I'm on busy doing my thing. I'm not aware, and I don't make myself aware, so I'm trying to keep that connection through my art. It's self-aggrandizing, I guess, but um, it's that law. It's, it, it's uh, like any other artist or poet who's exploring grieving and loss of any kind. You know? That's how you express it. And that's how it comes out, it, you know, and how I express it. When my husband first left, I did a lot of poetry. I wrote pages of poetry. Um, some wishing things that I put in cans and lit, but I took them back. <laughs> well, it paid off because you won the award out at the, uh, for your poetry. Yes, yes, poetry. yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, I, like I said, you know, we, we had, we were in that program where everything had to be to excel. You know? But it comes from your poetry. And it comes from your heart. Yeah, well, I, you know, I try to be honest. Your love has yeah. your feelings into it. Yes. Yeah. So um, I hope, you know, and I, I hope that doesn't put people off. Although, you know, a lot of people, art is your own personal journey. You know, mm -hmm. um, so whether it puts people off or not shouldn't matter. And on many levels, it doesn't matter to me because this is, you know, I, I'm realizing when I see how the painting is progressing, what the theme, you know, what's behind it, what the theme is, that's, you know, it's either the loss of contacting the loss of my mother or just the, the earth, you know. So I can see when it starts to grow what, you know, what the point kind of is. Um, but I agonize over the point because when I was in school, I was a good writer. And like I said, literature, you have a beginning, a middle, and an end. You make a point, you prove it or disprove it or explore it, whatever. I'm stuck in that mode. Because, <laughs> you know, I always ended up in these accelerated English classes and, and college too. It was like, oh, yeah, you do, oh, do this, you know. Um, so you kind of get stuck in that frame of work, how you work. So when I start the painting, it's like, okay. This is my idea now. Do I want to do it like this? Do I want to do it a little more ambiguous? Do I want to make it particularly expressive? Do I want people to really get it the first notch? Do I really care? Blah, 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 blah. And I go through this whole litany until I'm like, oh, I'm tired. I'm getting coffee. <laughs> you know, it's just, by the time I finish the intellectualizing, I have no energy left to paint. So that's why I try and do the palette knife and the, try, you know, molding with the, canvas to get my mind out of a different, you know, out of that mindset of, you know, making a point. Artists, writers, filmmakers, anybody like that creative, I feel like we're communicators anyway. We have something to say, you know, whether it's, you know, looking at this beautiful flower or preserving a moment like a haiku, you know, you're just saving something for other people to enjoy. Doesn't matter, we're communicating, so it's, you know, it's, um, you want people to kind of get it or get something out of it. They don't have to get what I get out of it, but they should look at it and, you know. But I've been in many tent shows and, you know, I get, we'll get one of these, you know, they, they come and they come to the opening and they're like, oh, it's wine, you know, kind of thing. And they just walk, they don't give it a moment, you know. Which is like, your loss, you know, because it's very interesting when people stop by and really look at this. Oh, I see this, I see that. Um, and they get something out of it, I feel, you know. And um, so, you know, do I care? Not at the moment, I have a job. If my life depended on it, I'd care very much, you know, but it doesn't. So I have that luxury up to, you know, to enjoy it for what it is for myself. So... Uh, I'm just trying to explore. I'm just I'm trying to get past being that very timid person who just cuts out the horse instead of drawing the horse. You know, like that. I want to get committed to just doing the art. So I'm looking to retire in two years, where I can spend every day waking up with a cup of coffee in my studio. <laughs> Hopefully, um, uh, you know. So that's it. I'm insane, and here it is—the evidence. It's all there. <laughs>